Well, it's Monday and I haven't recorded much over the weekend because my voice was pretty harsh. Uh, had a sore throat, wasn't feeling really good. Um, got a bag of tools packed and we are going on an adventure in the Camaro to go look at a guy's car who has a carburetor leaking over in Platteville. So we got about an hour drive. Uh, take you back and show you the uh, cement pad here and what this all looks like today. We did get some rain this morning, but the clouds are starting to break, so we're going to take the Camaro. We got a couple little low spots you can see where some water was sitting, but I am really happy with the uh, overall results here. The backyard's going to look great. I'm not sure if this is enough gravel or if we're going to go back a little further with the gravel. Um, we're going to kind of see how it all settles in here once we get a couple good rainstorms and drive in on it here. And the guy said he'll come back with the skid loader if we need to add more gravel. My guess, because this is so thick, this is going to end up settling. But I unloaded half of the building, trying to get it up off the ground with the pallet jack underneath it. It's been quite a bit of effort, but I didn't really want it sitting on the ground. So, unfortunately, I still don't have the frame. That'll probably be, I would say, within the next week or so. But we left the surface of the concrete a little rough and didn't quite finish it because we are going to epoxy coat it. So I think I might do that before I even put the building up. Haven't quite made that decision yet. Um, I'm not sure. I, I gotta kinda look into this stuff and see how long it's supposed to be cured before you apply it. So it might be something where I might not wanna put it on immediately and we may end up building the building and coming back in and epoxy coating it after. Uh, I just thought if we did it all the way to the edges underneath the metal rail having the coating between the cement and the steel might not be a bad option just to kind of protect that metal with one extra layer of you know moisture protection I'm not sure I don't know if anybody's done it that way or not before so gonna do a little research on that obviously before we coat it this week is pretty much all the way out because today is about the only day that it's not gonna be a a rainstorm is expected from Tuesday all the way till Friday and then we're supposed to have a really nice weekend so it'd be really awesome if on Friday they called me and said my building was there and I could go pick up the frame we could actually start building it this weekend because it is supposed to be really nice but for right now I got a bag of tools packed I have no idea what I need all I know it's a 1967 and I really don't even know what kind of car it is I can't remember the guy supposedly has a whole bunch of classics and a uh, buddy of mine really wanted me to go out and help him out because he just wants to get his car running this year oh, air compressor cold start to Camaro I do really love the way this car sounds it's just loud enough that not too loud, but it's got the nice tone to it, so. Alright. Well, we're going to get the air compressor filled up, get this thing pulled out of the garage, and get on the road. Like I said, I got an hour drive. On the way to this guy's house, I found me some brand new blacktop on these windy back roads in Wisconsin back here. This is some pretty fun driving out here. I will say, I had to lift the air suspension up because there's a couple dips in the road that I ended up dragging the exhaust. But, this is some fun driving out here. I will say, we have some roads around us that are just like driving in the mountains. Uh, being next to the river, we got some pretty steep hills and some pretty good curves that are carved out in here, so. Definitely some fun, exciting roads to drive in Wisconsin. I will say that for sure. Probably drive with my hands, not hold the camera. <laughs> yeah, I really feel like I need to come out here with my dash cam so I don't have to hold the camera. Um, this road's barely wide enough for two cars to pass each other on. But it's super windy. Oh, oh yeah. So you do kind of got to be careful going around these corners because you never know what's on the other side of them. But it's it's still pretty fun. 
one accelerating out the other side when we get to see what's going on. In the quarter mile. Sharp left. Sharp left. Let's see what that looks like. Oh yeah, it's a real sharp left. It's like a U-turn left. Oh, here's a car coming. Alright. I ain't kidding, it's a literal exactly U-turn. Sun is shining. In the quarter mile. Turn right. We're almost there. Bridge. But that thing's been there for a long time. Yeah, these roads are fun. This is uh this is quite the driving experience over here. I'm definitely coming back this way with the dash cam. It'd be uh probably be a good road to rip on. Destination is on the right. get some video of the car once we get it running uh kind of felt weird not really knowing the guy just to start saying hey can i record your cars so he did have a nice z06 sitting next to it along with another mustang in the corner that they're all covered up in his garage so beautiful car um from what he told me it was a 17 year project that a guy down in north carolina was building happened to guy got a finish and he passed away and so car went up for sale and he bought it so we're gonna get it running for him and make it work but until then I think I'm gonna concentrate on some of these back roads because this is some pretty fun driving back here well it was fun while it lasted but I caught up to somebody so I guess I'm gonna go their speed now which that's all right Still a very beautiful drive, even if we're going a little slower. Well, it was an awesome day to take the Camaro off for a good ride. Uh, had, had a lot of fun driving this today. Those back roads are really fun. This is the carburetor that I pulled off of, the 67 Mustang. Um, this car was absolutely beautiful. I don't have any video of it because I don't really know the guy. He was referred to me by a friend who I just needed to help, or that needed some help. And what I found is this accelerator pump had been running gas out onto the intake manifold. So we're gonna pull the carburetor apart, probably clean it all out, replace all the gaskets and put it back together. However, once I got it removed from the engine, I realized that there's a port here that looked like it had a hose on it, but I didn't disconnect the hose. I'm pretty sure from talking to the guy as I was removing it, um, I went back in and I saw the hose was like underneath the intake and so I asked him how the brakes felt and he said it, it idled like it had a really big cam in it and it ran really rough and the brake pedal was really stiff so pretty sure that since he's only, he just got the car I don't think he's ever actually really driven it um, it was a long-term restoration project he said the guy was working on it for 17 years and it came out of North Carolina. So he has no idea what's done to the car. All he knew is that he pulled it out to take it for a drive with a couple of his friends. And all of a sudden there was gas dumping all over the engine. A friend of mine who's been trying to get me to do some work for him, wanted me to go over and take a look at it. I did, it was easy. It took me a half an hour to pull it apart. Uh, biggest issue was I didn't have a seven eighths for these, or uh, not a seven eighths. This is a 15 sixteenths. And I only took a 7 eighths, not realizing that that was going to be bigger. Because I had never seen the car before, so I had no idea what tools to take. So I grabbed a big case of them. This is what I ended up with. And I had enough things to get it off the car. Now I'm just going to order parts and rebuild it. But what we found was right here, fuel leaking out onto the intake, which is a very common problem with the Holly. Uh, whenever these things get fuel in them and then they dry out, it, it's hard on the accelerator pump, it's hard on the gaskets. Um, 
so cars that don't get driven all the time and they're start once or twice a year and barely get any miles the fuel systems are usually kind of a problem on them so we're gonna go ahead and get this all ripped apart and see what we have i have no idea exactly what kind of car well it's a holly but i'm not sure exactly what holly carburetor this is uh i'll have to find some numbers on it so anyway i'm gonna figure out what parts i need to order for this and get those coming uh he's out of town for a week so i have a week to get it fixed and then next monday i'm gonna drive back up there and when i get this car running i'll definitely make sure i get some video of the, the rebuilding of the carburetor and the actual car that it goes on with it running so it should make a good video because like i said it, it's a 67 mustang didn't spend a whole lot of time gawking at the guy's car but he's got a few cars that are pretty cool so and my friend said he needs a he needs a lot of little things done on his fleet of cars i only saw a couple of them but he had a z06 and another mustang and he's having another mustang rebuilt right now that he had pictures on his phone from so he definitely has a lot of toys so might be a good customer to have and some new vehicles for the channel so i'll be kind of excited to see what ends up happening with this all right well with that i'm gonna get some parts ordered for this carburetor thanks for watching make sure you like and subscribe to follow along and uh we got some more exciting stuff coming to the channel.